right, thanks a lot, Dave. We're here at the Mac Center on the campus of Kent State University. The Golden Flash is trailing the Salukis on Bracket Buster Saturday. Jamal Turner knocks down a jump shot. And the Salukis now with a four to nothing lead. Southern Illinois out of the Missouri Valley taking on the Max Kent State Golden Flashes. Kent State coming into the game 16 to nine overall. The Salukis 21 and six as both teams, Mike Jarvis, step out of conference for a pivotal and critical game. Huge games, not only for their teams, but also for their conferences to gain a lot of respect. Real nice uh, ball move at that time. But what you're gonna see today and what we've seen already before the fans joined us was Kent State went zone early against the Southern Illinois team. Their strategy today is gonna be to try to make Southern Illinois shoot and make threes. On the other hand, they've got to take care of the basketball because Southern Illinois, led by Darren Brooks, is one of the great teams in the country as far as defensive pressure and stealing the basketball. Yeah, they only allow their opponents 61 points per game. Right now, Cutley at the free throw line for Kent State. Cutley, a 67% free throw shooter, knocks it down, and it's a one-point ball game just underway here at the Mack Center. Take a look at the starting lineups. Interesting to note that Southern Illinois started playing very, very good basketball once they reinserted Matt Shaw back into the starting lineup. And a bit of a change today, a departure for Kent State as Marcus Crenshaw, the 5'9 freshman, gets the start at point. Armin Gates will be coming off the bench. Jay Youngblood, who just checked back in the game for Kent State, is playing really well lately. In fact, he had 15 his last game, and uh, they need a little, going to need a little more offense against this Southern Illinois team. Darren Brooks missing that three-pointer, but they get the rebound back. Darren Brooks, the reigning Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year and the Defensive Player of the Year in the Missouri Valley. That's where Southern Illinois is so dangerous, putting the ball on the ground, whether it's man or zone. And once again, it's Jamal Tatum knocking down his second long-range jumper. Tatum, a very talented sophomore from Jefferson City, Missouri. Averaging a little over 11 points a game. Southern Illinois leading 7-3. to three. It's huge for, for Southern Illinois for Jamal Tatum to make a couple of jump shots because he hasn't been shooting well lately. Rosinski rejected underneath, out of bounds. And it's off of the Golden Flashes. It'll be Southern Illinois ball. The Max having a good day so far. See if Kent State can keep up the pace here. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. And Wendy's new combo choices. Wendy's, it's better here. Bracket Buster Saturday here on ESPN 2 and Southern Illinois leading 7-3. I'm Mark Jones, courtside, along with Mike Jarvis. Thanks for coming aboard, Mike. The Salukis have won four consecutive games. They're playing some good boss basketball, leading the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, tough when you step out of conference in a game like this. Well, it's always tough when you step out, but this is a veteran team, and uh, they can do it. Let's take a look at our star watch. Darren Brooks, the guy to watch when you talk about Southern Illinois in the backcourt. Well, he's one of the best backcourt players in the country. Leads his team in just about every category, and especially in wins where he's got 100. For Kent State, on the other hand, you got Kevin Wazinski, who will step away from the basket as a big forward, can pass it, can shoot it from outside, and at times it almost looks like Kent State's playing with five perimeter players. Wazinski had 14 points in their last game, a loss at Buffalo. Averaging 12 and a half per game. Salukis with possession. In the red uniforms, Kent State in the white. Kent State has gone, right now, gone back to going to man-to-man, -to -man, which is their primary defense, but they're going to mix it up today, as we saw already with the 2-3 zone. Tatum with a nice feed to Shaw, and Shaw knocks down his second baseline jump shot. Seems to like that spot as Southern Illinois now with a 9-3 lead. Both teams have very skilled forwards. They can all step away from the basket and knock down that mid-range jump shot, which makes both teams very difficult to defend. Mike Scott has checked into the ball game for the Golden Flashes. Here's Gates out top. He's trying to break out of a bit of a slim shooting slump. He's over his last 12 three-pointers now. Well, the best thing he can do, Mark, is keep taking them because eventually they'll fall again. He's a good shooter. Youngblood, who had an outstanding night Tuesday night in that loss at Buffalo. He had 15 points, knocks down his first field goal there, and it's 9-5. And Brooks has been conspicuous by his offensive silence so far. Well, that's got a lot to do with the defense of Kent State. They're going to give him a lot of extra attention. The other thing great about him is, as you'll see here, 
He, he usually he will not force things. That time he missed the layup, a jump ball. And the possession arrow in favor of Southern Illinois. A couple more subs coming to the ball game. Cutley coming in for Kent State. Well, here's, uh, here's Darren on, on the drive uh, on the baseline. And, and, you know, that time there may be just a little bit anxious. I think he wants to show the nation how good he really is. Mike, interesting to note that both these coaches, Chris Lowry and Jim Christian, Kent State like to use their benches liberally. Falker missing the layup inside. Had a good look at it. Well, they both do, and they both realize that these teams are only going to get better, and the players are only going to get better if they get a chance to play. And neither neither coach is afraid to put in a fresh body at any time. Chris Lowry in his first season as the head man for Southern Illinois, keeping the momentum going in that program. And Jim Christian in his third season on the sidelines of Kent State. Christian saying that this is a big confidence game for his crew. They still have a chance of winning the Mac East Division title with four games remaining in their season. Well, that league is so bunched up. Uh, you're talking about a team that right now is in seventh place, but they're a half a game out of second. So this is a huge game. And it's huge because when they get into the league tournament at the end of the year, the, the top teams get by, so you want to get that by in the first round. Here's Gates. Swing it weak side. The thing I love about both these teams is they move the ball really well. Both teams are, I think, very unselfish, and uh, they play good, old-fashioned, fundamental basketball. Well, look at Southern Illinois, Mike, really denying hard on the wings and great ball pressure. Haynes inside. A nice feed, but Edwin missed the shot. But he got it back. Missed it again. Tipped up three for a quarter. Five for a dollar. They finally made one count. Well, when you're out denying and you're overplaying the passing lanes, you do give up a little bit of rebounding position, but Southern Illinois scores so many points off of steals and transition. Here's Young out top. Two-point ball game, 13-20 to go in the first half. Brooks still hasn't scored for the Salukis. On the baseline, Owen missing. There's going to be a push underneath. The foul is going to go against Randall Falker, the 6'7 freshman. Both teams well schooled on defense. That time you could see the weak side players, the players coming from the side opposite the ball, coming over to help, and then recovering. And both both guys today in their shoot arounds were really emphasizing how important it was to control the dribble and protect the paint. That was the 13th foul against Southern Illinois. As Edwin will take a seat on the bench. Both Edwin and Wierzynski not in the ball game. That's some 25 points per game on the bench for Kent State. Mike, where is the offense going to come from? Well, you know, it's really funny you ask that, but uh, Gerwing, uh, who is number two, played on that grade eight team that they had a few years ago. And he knows how to play. His problem is that he's been having some knee problems with three operations. Well, that time it was Cutley getting inside with that wide body of his. And we are tied at nine apiece. Whistle and a foul underneath going to go against the Golden Flashes. That's their 16th foul already. Hey, Bracket Buster Saturday featuring teams trying to break their way into March's NCAA tournament continues with two more games coming up next right here on ESPN2. It's UW-Milwaukee against Hawaii at 8 o'clock Eastern. Then at midnight Eastern, Omar Thomas and UTEP take on the uh, Pacific Tigers. Shot off the mark. Boy, look at Cutley battling inside and rejected nicely by Falker. This is where Southern Illinois is very dangerous. Kent State today has turned the tables a little bit so far in terms of them getting the steals. Youngblood not shy. Had to go halfway down and out. Falker active at both ends of the floor. And right now, Kent State in the midst of a 6 to nothing run, still tied at 9. And you know what's good is both these teams, as good as they are in defense, and they hold their opponents down in scoring, it's not because they hold the ball, it's because they play good defense, because both teams will run and try to score off transition. Inside, block shot. Two misses that time by Lamar Owen. And we have a timeout on the floor, Southern Illinois. One of the winningest programs in all of college basketball over the last three years, facing a daunting task here at the Max Center and their fans. Well, the fans here at the Max Center braved the freezing and frigid temperatures outside hours prior to the game to get inside. <laughs> Boy, they are uh, pretty loud, and uh, you know, Southern Illinois. 
been tough against those fans over the last three years. Look at that record. Each of those seasons, they went to the NCAA tournament. 25, 24, and 28 wins, Mike Jarvis. And it all started with Bruce Weber. And right now, they have had some very good caretakers of the program. The man in charge of that right now, Chris Lowry, has done a wonderful job at 21 and 6 this season. And he's only 32 years old. And uh, but the one thing that they have done, and I'll, we'll talk a little bit about this later. The AD here has kept this program in house, and he said, "You know what? We're winning. Nothing's wrong. There's no need of changing. Let's not fix something that's going well." And that's what they keep doing. They just keep on winning. And Lowry, a former point guard at Southern Illinois, went to the Sweet 16 three years ago. The last two years. Unfortunately, have lost in the first round of the NCAAs, and that time the jump shot by Shaw rejected. Good defensive play by Scott Cutler. Real good. And speaking of defense, Kent State has mixed up their defenses against out of bounds. Last time they went zone. This time here, it looks like they're going a little bit man to man. Shaw had it knocked away off the Aaron pass from Brooks. And Crenshaw misfiring with the pass. Well, no need that time for the fancy pass. Just make the simple, good, old-fashioned two-hand chest <laughs> pass. Get it done. Southern Illinois comes into this game with an RPI of 13. That'll get you in, in the tournament any year, at least it should. And uh, this is a team that if they just keep playing solid, they will be in the SAA tournament. They'll probably win some games when they get there. Hairston on the baseline, no good. And it's one and done at the offensive end for the Salukis. Doing a nice job, Kent State, once the coming over to help on the drives, taking away the total drive to the basket. Interesting that uh, Tony and Shaw, the only players to score for Southern Illinois, albeit right now on defense as we approach the midway point of the first half. Baseline jump shot way off the mark. Gerwig missed everything. And quickly, Hairston. Boy, Kelly had a good look the first time. He passed it up. You wonder which team is the, one of the top leaders in steals. Because uh, Kent's doing a great job stealing the basketball. Nice jump stop. And your jumper no good. Crenshaw now. He's a gunner. The flash is pounding the glass. Very tied up jump ball possession arrow in favor of Kent State as Rosinski comes back into the ball game. Well, I think it's still Kent State's ball. Fans, of course, are a little upset. They thought he got fouled. That was a clean block. Didn't see the jump, but nevertheless, the right team has the basketball. Kent State, uh, I'm sorry, yes, uh, Southern Illinois. Uh, will play probably 99.9 percent. In fact, make that 100 percent man to man. And it's paid off this year. They've limited their opponents to just 61 points per game. Well, they believe... came up way short then. Yes, and that's obviously their defense is standing out on it. He's got to have to get it off a little quicker than that against these guys. Darren Brooks being stymied so far defensively. Hasn't been able to get many open looks like that one until now. Brooks knocks down the three-pointer, and that's why he's the reigning Missouri Valley Conference and Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. Averaging over 14 points a game, leads the team in rebounding as well at over five per game. And he's their iron man, 33 minutes per run. Won't see him on the bench that much today. No, you won't. And uh, he knows he knows how to play, and he's the kind of guy that he can turn it up when his team needs it most. Good job on the boards uh, that time boxing out by uh, Southern Illinois and they're gonna have to continue to do that. Josh Warren with a good rebound and here he is at the offensive end looking inside. Nice feed to Shaw and Shaw gets the layup over Wazinski. And Southern Illinois out in front 14 to 9 as we pass the midway point in the first half. Well earlier today uh, Coach Christian was talking about getting the ball inside. Let's see if uh, Kent State will go inside to uh, Wazinski uh, sooner than later as they need to get here. Crenshaw, the freshman from Detroit, Michigan. Of course, if you hit those jump shots, maybe you don't. Crenshaw shoots about 44% from downtown. Tatum working him on defense inside. Really nice, real yeah, solid, shot. fundamental bounce pass off the off against the overplay. Hairston made it count, and the lead is back up to five. These guys can really play. They just know how to play basketball. They've been playing together, seems like, forever. And uh, they really read each other very well. French underneath had it partially blocked. Got it back. This way, you just want your point guard to slow the team down. Try to see if you can get the ball inside a little bit, because if there's any one place you want to go against Southern Illinois, it's inside. 
And now it's Crenshaw's show at the point. Three seconds on the shot clock. And they had to hoist one up. Young blood way off the mark. You got no shot, you got no clock. You got to know when that clock's winding down. And that's not just the, the job of the point guard, that's the job of his teammates as well. Somebody should have told him. Tatum on the baseline. He's been their most prolific shooter, and there he proves it once again. He is so quick. He's, uh, he's, he's a nightmare. Jim Christian calls timeout for Kent State as Jamal Tatum starts to light it up. Tatum with three jump shots from outside has done well offensively for Southern Illinois. Well, tonight, a full day of ESPN College basketball wrapping up at 9 Eastern as the SEC's leading scorer, Lawrence Roberts, and Mississippi State Bulldogs try to hand Kentucky their second straight conference loss. Mississippi State, Kentucky, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Contact your cable operator, DirecTV, or Dish Network today. How many? Right now, it's a seven-point ball game, and Jamal Tatum has really found his stroke from outside. He was a member of the all-freshman team last year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Really having a breakout season. Tatum with five points in the ball game. If there's any weakness in Tatum's game, at times it's just a matter of strength. He probably needs to put on maybe another five pounds of muscle, but he's a very, very tenacious player. Probably the best defender on the ball, as you can see here. He's great against the basketball. Gets a lot of five-second counts. Haynes now, Mike, back in the ball game, running the point for Kent State. Let's see if we go inside. Edwin, nice feed underneath. Got a finish. Krasinski lost the handle. And Tatum was fouled going for the loose ball by Youngblood. And that's the third team foul against Kent State. And Saluki's also with three team fouls. And you got to watch it because this is the type of afternoon on Bracket Buster Saturday. If you're not careful, you'll get your fillings rattled in your teeth. It's rough underneath, folks. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everyone. Saturday night, Bracket Buster Saturday here on ESPN2. Southern Illinois out of the Missouri Valley Conference leading by eight in Kent State with a lot of work ahead. But during the last six seasons, they have been one of the better programs in the country from the three straight NCAA tournaments, making it to the Elite Eight in 2002. And a, the departed coach, Stan Heath, now at Arkansas. And I was looking at that graphic. You see some of those players. And how about the football? How about the football play? <laughs> Eight. Hey. Never played football here for the Golden Flashes, but has made a nice living grabbing some nice paychecks doing it for the San Diego Chargers. Well, let's take a look. I hope we can see him. Oh, he's in attendance as well, huh? <laughs> Antonio Gates. Oh, uh, boy. What a great year. Had a good time out in Hawaii recently playing in the Pro Bowl. Scored some points for his team. Nice pass from Peyton Manning. And, and his team has gone uh, gone back to zone, uh, trying to slow down the Southern Illinois team a little bit. Oh, what a great lead by Tatum inside to Shaw, Mike. He's having a great game. He's doing it all. Uh, he's driving, scoring, and he's passing the basketball. And, of course, he's playing great defense. Southern Illinois now in the midst of a 7 to nothing run. With six and a half minutes to play in the first half, they lead by 10. Edwin trying to get on track, and he does taking it to the cup. Well, that was huge, because any time you get down by more than 10, it seems like it's a psychological barrier that some teams have a very difficult time dealing with. Great ball movement by Southern Illinois. And they cash in on the baseline. Nice move by Tony Young, one of several players, one of four players off the bench for Chris Lowry that gets regular run. Tatum and Shaw both with eight points in the ball game. Great balance with this team. And, uh, you know, you give their guards a little bit more attention than sometime maybe you want to, and it just opens up things for a lot of people. 13 on the shot clock. Youngblood comes up short. 
Out of bounds, it'll be Kent State ball. The one thing, Mike, you notice when you watch Southern Illinois defensively, they really make you start your offense far out. They really do. I mean, and, and that's because they pick up full court. And even off, even off the made baskets, they're going to get you right at the end line. So if you're not careful, you don't have a really good point guard, you're starting your offense 25 feet from the basket. And because of that, Kent State shooting just 24% from the field right now. Right, you've got to get the ball inside, whether it's by the pass or by the dribble. Kick it back out to Haynes. Haynes trying to break out of his shooting slump. Back comes Southern Illinois. Shooting 48% from the field so far. They're really a solid, solid team at both ends of the court, and they're so unselfish. Oh, if the Warren wasn't expecting the pass that time from Hairston. Out of bounds, and it'll be Kent State basketball. That's the sixth turnover of the ball game for the Southern Illinois Salukis. And that's what I mean right here. They're picking them up, and they're going to make you work every inch of the floor, 94 feet. Five minutes to go in the first half. And if and when the ball does go in the post, they'll usually come in doubles, just like they did there with the weak side fold, with the low man opposite the ball. Jumper no good by Cutley. And it's one and done. Uh, about five minutes ago, Kent State was doing a nice job on the offensive boards, but haven't gotten any since. Well, they've got to stay patient. They've got to, they have to do a better job boxing out, that's for sure. There's off the mark. Run when you can, set it up when you can. Edwin, nice beat, cross court, Cutley and one. Scott Cutley will have an opportunity to complete the three-point play. You know, against the Southern Illinois team, you may want to try to really get the ball up quickly and then go for quick scores just like you see it right here as opposed to trying to set up the half court offense. Cutley with seven points in the ball game, the leading scorer for Kent State. And a team high five rebounds against Buffalo in their loss in the last game earlier this week. And uh, a 67% foul shooter knocks that one down. And that snaps the long run by Southern Illinois. The lead down to seven now with 4.20 to play in the first half. Point in the game where you tell your team, let's get two or three stops in a row and score a couple of times. And you know what? It's a new ball game. Dale off to Young, and Young is off the mark. Want to push and get a good advantage? Fine. Otherwise, set it up. Good patience that time. Well, Youngblood was just itching to shoot. Nice move on the block. Cutley couldn't finish it that time. Out of bounds, and it stayed with the Golden Flashes. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Bracket Buster Saturday. Hopes, dreams, aspirations on the line when we come back. Scott Reese here in the studio ahead on the Century 21 halftime report. Iowa State, long pegged as a team which couldn't win on the road, gets a huge road victory. Number one, Illinois on the road, keeping its perfect season alive and six and a half hours of NHL meetings. But what's it all good for? We'll have the latest at halftime. Now back to Mark and Mike. Yeah, what about that? How about, what is a what is a season really not canceled? <laughs> well, I don't think it ever is. But, you know, Scott just made a real good point about the road and how tough it is to win. One thing I think everybody needs to know watching these games in Bracket Buster, and it's a pretty good thing they did, the visiting team's officials, the officials from that league, in this case here, the Missouri Valley Conference officials, are doing this game at Kent State. That sort of balances things, I think, tremendously, and it gives the visiting team a better chance than they usually have on the road. Well, the good thing about this contest so far is that it uh, really hasn't been a factor. No, it hasn't. Seven-point lead and a 340 to go in the first half. And we were going to talk about Brooks being on the bench, but he's back in the game. And what we were going to say, and, and I think it's an example of how good this Southern Illinois team is, is that when you can have your best player on the bench for three, four, five minutes in the first half, that's a pretty good sign of depth. Yeah, Brooks, an outstanding athlete, both Wisconsin and Iowa, asked him to walk on for the respective football teams coming out of high school. Also an outstanding baseball player drawing interest from the Arizona Diamondbacks out of high school. Well, it looks like a lot of these guys probably played uh, good defense. Oh, well, there's going to be a foul called against Youngblood. 
It's you know you hate to see good defense, especially good off the ball defense, not rewarded. Well, Mike, maybe we head back to the hotel or hit a sports bar and watch UW Milwaukee take on Hawaii tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. Then a game at midnight. Uh, Omar Thomas and UTEP taking on UOP. Well, I thought we were going to fly out and do that uh, midnight game. <laughs> hey, don't say it too loudly. They might have a good idea in that. Loose ball underneath, and this will be an Good easy one here. for Cutley. Just lay it in, son. That's 10 points for Cutley in the ball game. And big, the lead has shrunk down to five. Edwin with tight defense on Brooks out top. Doing a real good job, both teams defensively helping against screens on the ball. Harrison had a notion. Kent State is trailing all the guys coming off screens, so Southern Illinois look for them to start curling going into the lane. Tatum feeling his groove Boy. and getting his groove on. Jamal Tatum, the sophomore, knocks down another three ball. He's got 11 in the ball game, and it's 26 to 18. I believe that's his third three. He's really playing well at both ends. Got 46 percent from downtown a season ago. Keeps the trend going. Haynes missed the reverse layup. Is really slumping at play. Yeah, but you know, once again, I'm glad his coach hasn't quit on him. And as long as he doesn't quit on himself, he'll get out of the slump. And he gets a screen held up. Good help and recover that time by Kent State. There's Brooks. Nice feed to Falker on the baseline, and Haynes comes up with the rebound. And a nice quick hit ahead to Gates. You know, the beautiful thing. Young blood off the mark, and he got it back. The beautiful thing about watching teams play, we got two very good man-to-man -man teams, and just the little things that they do, and they do a little differently. Uh, Southern Illinois likes to jump double-team balls when they come off screens. Kent State likes to help and recover, but they both do, do, do it very well. Some of the nuances in the ball game, and uh, got a five-second violation that time against the Golden Flashes. Wow. See that one whistled often, but you saw the graphic a few moments ago. Kent State has not made a three-point field goal in the ball game so far as we approach one and a half to go in the first half. Brooks underneath. He's got the strength to get a shot off down there, but missed that time. Out of bounds, Saluki basketball. Darren looks like he's forcing just a little bit today. He's got to, I think, just be a little bit more patient when he gets the ball inside that post. Brooks with four double doubles on the season. Having a tough time getting it in bounds, but made the right pass. Nice pass. Owen was rejected. Good execution on that out of bounds play. Brooks wide open and drops it like it's hot. Darren Brooks knocks down his first three pointer. He's got six in the game. And the lead has swollen back up to 11 points. You no, know, it's nice when your best player can score sometime, you know, without even shooting the ball. I mean, get it off the defense like he can. Crowd has been kept out of the ball game so far here at Kent State. Good point. That's what you always want to do when you're the visiting team. There's that little double team we were talking about on handoffs and coming off screens. They like to double. Rosinski missed an easy one. They got the rebound back. Haynes out top. Nice pull up. And he finally got one to fall. You know, his head coach, Jim Christian, after the Buffalo game, sat him down in his office and said, listen, son, you're not going to break out of a shooting slump by not putting in some extra time in the gym. In the last three consecutive days, he has put in a lot of time, putting up hundreds of jump shots per day. And hopefully the young man can come around. Well, 14 seconds to go in the first half. Nine-point lead for the Salukis. Tatum. The Good offensive point. spark plug of the game so far for Southern Illinois going to decide it himself, and that's how he does it. Jamal Tatum. Time for last shot. He is just freak nasty on these guys. He's just killing them in the first 20 minutes of play. Jamal Tatum is on fire right now. Throw some water on him. 14 points in the first half. Scott Reese in the studio with a Century 21 halftime report. Scott, that's a five-alarm blaze right now. All right, Mark. We'll leave the water.